welcome back today we are going to learn about unesco world heritage sites in india first what is unesco unesco is united nations educational scientific and cultural organization so unesco uh, designates world heritage sites through a committee called world heritage committee which was formed in the year 1972 let me write it here world heritage sites are designated by world heritage committee which was formed in the year 1972 right now india has as of 2022 india has 40 world heritage sites in it okay it, it which makes it the third uh, country i mean sixth country yeah sixth largest country which has not largest sixth country which has most world heritage sites in itself okay 40 now we can write this 40 as 32 plus 7 plus 1 so this 32 are cultural heritage sites this 7 are natural heritage sites and this one is mixed both cultural and natural so we'll discuss about this concept in the next video now we'll look at this the world heritage sites in india like state wise for that let us come over here here we can find number of world heritage sites number of states and the total number of world heritage sites as a result okay that means there is one state that has five uh, heritage sites in itself and two states which have four heritage sites in itself like that so first we we'll look at the one state which has the most number of world heritage sites in itself now what is that it is maharashtra okay let me write it here first maharashtra right coming over to the map you know this is maharashtra now let us let me point out the five world heritage sites that are in maharashtra first this one and this one this is ajanta ajanta caves so ajanta caves are related to buddhist buddhist art coming to ellora this is ellora caves in ellora caves uh, not only buddhist but also jainism and also hinduism so buddhism jainism and hinduism includes in ellora caves okay the art now coming to the next three 1 2 right total 5 next three are located here in mumbai okay so what are they 1 2 and 3 first we find chatrapati shivaji terminus what is chatrapati shivaji terminus it is the railway station of mumbai okay it was earlier it was formerly known as victoria's victoria terminus now coming to the next one it is also caves we have seen 1 2 2 caves right coming to the next caves it is elephanta caves elephanta caves so we find three caves in maharashtra which are heritage sites world heritage sites it is an island actually elephanta caves they are located in an island beside mumbai right coming to the next one it is victorian gothic art and deco okay so we have seen 1 2 3 4 5 so five world heritage sites in one state that is maharashtra so resulting in 5 into 1 is 5 okay we have completed 5 now coming to the next one here as we can see two states have four heritage sites in themselves okay two states now what are they they are just neighbors okay one is gujarat and the other one is rajasthan now let us come out to the map here i find this is gujarat this is rajasthan first let us see the four world heritage sites in gujarat one here 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 and here is it visible yeah, okay all right so let us name them let us see what they are first this one this is dholavira is this name familiar of course it is right this is the most 
prominent one of the most prominent states i mean cities in the indus valley civilization we have seen that right dholavira and also a specialty here is this is the most recently designated world heritage site in india it was designated as world heritage site as i mean in the year 2021 okay 2021 latest coming to the next one this it is called rani ki wow it is a seven level step well for rani i mean the queen next comes this one this is the historical city of ahmedabad historical city of ahmedabad then this one is champaner champaner uh, pavagad champaner pavagad archaeological park so champaner pavagad archaeological park historical city of ahmedabad rani ki wow and dholavira right these four are in gujarat now which state is the one other than gujarat which has four heritage sites it is rajasthan as i previously told you okay right coming to rajasthan just above gujarat here we find four one one two right let me just point out two for now so this is kio ladio kio ladio national park we can mostly see birds there and coming to this one we know that uh where should i write we know that this is the capital city of rajasthan that is the pink city jaipur right it the city itself is the world heritage site and including including jantar mantar which is in gujar i mean uh, jaipur right jantar mantar jaipur and kiyoladio so 1 2 3 now which is the fourth one this fourth one doesn't have a particular location to spot on so there are actually six forts which we call hill forts so all these six forts are heritage sites and all of them together we consider as one called hill forts of rajasthan now let us point out with where that six forts are one is over here one is over here three Four, five, and six. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the hill forts of Rajasthan. So one, two, three, and four of Rajasthan. So Rajasthan and Gujarat have four world heritage sites each, which gives us the number eight. So we have seen five in uh, Maharashtra, eight in Gujarat and Rajasthan, both combined. Now let us move on to the next one. there are two states which have three world heritage sites you can see that we are going in a uh, like descending order 5 4 3 2 1 the number of whs so that these uh, the number of states vary okay there are two in uh, uh, which have four there are two which have three let let us see what they are those two are just just beside this gang okay uh they are madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh right okay right so these two just beside them uh, if this is a line this is its parallel line right just like that these two have three world heritage sites each let us see first madhya pradesh here we find one here we find one here we find one first this one this is kajraho monuments of kajraho okay next coming to this one this is sanchi stupa or the monuments of buddha okay sanchi stupa okay this is very famous actually then coming to the next one this is bhimbedkar bhimbedkar rock shelter it is famous for the rock art which was made in the uh, like hunter gatherer societies at that time okay rock shelter bhimbedkar rock shelter now this is madhya pradesh three of them kajraho bhimbedkar and sanchi stupa coming to the next one 
उत्तर प्रदेश क्विक पैक्ट ऑल दीज थ्री वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट्स इन उत्तर प्रदेश आर लोकेटेड ओनली इन आगरा थ्री ऑफ देम आर इन आगरा दैट्स इट सो जिस वन पॉइंट एंड देर आर थ्री ऑफ देम वन टू एंड थ्री ओके फर्स्ट वी फाइंड आगरा फोर्ट एंड देन वी फाइंड फातेहपुर सिकरी हियर फातेहपुर सिकरी इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ फोर मॉन्यूमेंट्स वॉट आर दोज फोर मॉन्यूमेंट्स इंक्लूड द Uh, what was it? Yeah, Bulan Darwaza. Then the tomb of Salim Chisti, tomb of Salim Chisti, Bulan Darwaza, Jama Masjid, and Panch Mahal. So these four include in Fatehpur Sikri, which is one of the heritage sites in Uttar Pradesh. Now coming to the next one, very famous Taj Mahal, which is also one of the wonders of the world. Right. मध्य प्रदेश एंड उत्तर प्रदेश कंप्लीटेड नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन नेक्स्ट बैच ओके सो दिस इज आल्सो कंप्लीटेड व्हिच थ्री इंटू टू रिजल्टेड इन सिक्स ओके नाउ कम्स टू इंटू फोर फर्स्ट वी हैव सीन फोर इंटू टू टू ऑफ देम व्हिच हैव फोर नाउ फोर ऑफ देम व्हिच हैव टू ओके नाउ फोर ऑफ देम व्हाट आर दोज तमिलनाडु कर्नाटका असोम एंड बिहार Right, these four have two world heritage sites each, which resulted in eight. First, let's come to the map. Right, first Tamil Nadu. Here we find one and two. Right, this one is Mahabalipuram. The monuments of Mahabalipuram, which is also called as Mamalapuram. Monuments of Mahabalipuram or Mamalapuram. Now coming to this one, this is the great. Living temples of Chola. As the name suggests, these temples were constructed by Chola dynasty when in that period. Actually, this uh, these temples are three, three of them. This the they three are located on the banks of Kaveri over here near the delta. And Mahabalipuram, these monuments by Pallava dynasty. these are by chola these monuments are by palava right now coming to karnataka uh right tamil nadu completed now karnataka here we find two as i said right this one is pattadakal pattadakal right these are the monuments uh yeah it was constructed it was built in the period of chalukyas by chalukyas and coming to hampi this is hampi this was uh, the capital city of vijayanagara hampi was the capital city of vijayanagara empire right so we have seen three kingdoms already chalukyas vijayanagara pallava and chola okay this is karnataka and tamil nadu now let's move on to the northeast asia i mean northeast india that is asia i mean why am i so confused okay assam here one and two okay here one we find kaziranga national park which is famous for its single horn rhinos we find two third of population of single horn rhinos in kaziranga okay two third of whole world population of single horn rhinos we find it kaziranga coming to next one this is manas wildlife sanctuary wildlife sanctuary okay here the thing is unesco declared two of the world heritage sites in india as endangered okay one of them is manas why because of the bodo militants here and also the other one is hampi the one we have just discussed because of the uh, highly increasing of traffic and new construction of buildings near it so hampi and manas wildlife sanctuary are, are declared as endangered by unesco right this is assam now coming to bihar assam also finished now bihar here we find one and the other one here 
so this is nalanda uh, during the uh, which which kingdom was that okay yeah magadha yeah so during the magadha kingdom period this nalanda university there was a university nalanda university it was really famous and all students all over the world came here to study okay it was the first ever residential university in the world so next coming to here this one is bodhi gaya or mahabodhi temple so bodhi gaya legends say that uh, the buddha he he was enlightened under this tree called bodhi okay and it is located at gaya so bodhi gaya or mahabodhi temple right two of them in uh, bihar so tamil nadu karnataka assam and bihar completed so totally 2 into 4 8 right now let's let us see the seven states which have one heritage site each as i have said there are seven of them let us see what they are so 1 into 7 is equal to 7 first we come to goa here this is the churches and convents of goa okay churches and convents of goa and a quick fact Do, did you know that goa old goa it was the capital city of portuguese colonies right portuguese they they stayed in india for more than 450 years and old goa is their capital city was their capital city right right and yeah portuguese left india in 1961 and they stayed over 450 years moving on here we find telangana in telangana here we find kakatiya rudreshwara kakatiya rudreshwara temple it is also called as ramappa temple now who is ramappa ramappa is the engineer who constructed this temple so this temple was constructed as the name suggests it was constructed under kakatiya so kakatiya dynasty right moving on here we find odisha in this we find the konark sun temple konark sun temple right and next in west bengal we find the sundarban national park sundarban national park right here uh, this sundarban national park as its location sees that it is located in the ganga and brahmaputra delta which is the largest delta in the world right it is located in ganga brahmaputra delta sundarban national park now moving on to the sikkim above west bengal here we find kanchenjunga national park we know that kanchenjunga is the uh, world's third highest peak right world's third highest mountain so this national park is located around it so it's called kanchenjunga national park now going on here we find uttarakhand actually uh, here there are two national park two national parks one is nanda devi nanda devi national park and valley of flowers valley of flowers national park right but as these two are very close to each other these two are combined and together called as one heritage site okay when someone ask you which world heritage site is located in uttarakhand you should say nanda devi and valley of flowers both are considered to be one right moving on here we find in himachal pradesh uh, right in himachal pradesh we find the great himalayan um national park the great himalayan national park right so to remember this easily you can draw a line exclude goa and from telangana draw a line to odisha 
and follow to west bengal up to sikkim from sikkim like walk through nepal walk through nepal you enter uttarakhand then up to himachal pradesh so follow this line and you will see the states which have one uh, heritage site each including goa i mean excluding goa so goa and this line that's it right yeah and also konark sun temple it is famous for its kalinga ar- architecture kalinga architecture right um yeah that's it so we have also seen the states which have one world heritage site each so 1 into 7 is 7 right okay now we have seen the states so 5 4 3 2 1 right now let us go to union territories number of uts 1 and 1 so we find world heritage sites in only two uts out of 7 right let us see what they are out of 9 actually yeah let us see what they are 1 and 1 in 1 we find three of them so let us see first that it is the capital city of india that is delhi here here we find three of them they are 1 2 and 3 right first we find humayun's tomb humayun's tomb then red fort and then comes the qutub minar qutub minar and its monuments okay three of them in delhi now coming to the next one so this is delhi as i said 3 into 1 is 3 we found three of them now coming to the next one it is chatti uh, chandigarh yeah chandigarh we know it is the capital city of punjab and haryana and a union territory itself so here we find chandigarh and the one we find here is the architectural work of lee carboiser uh here uh, right so actually this is not a normal world heritage site this is a transnational world heritage site now what is transnational it means that this heritage site is shared by seven countries around the world that means this heritage site is also present in six more countries other than india let us see what they are one is france france germany belgium switzerland so four countries in europe share this uh, world heritage site and in south america we find only one argentina in asia we find two india and japan okay 1,2,3,4,5,6 okay yeah this is the correct spelling i guess yeah 1,2,3,4,5,6,7 7 seven countries share this uh, particular world heritage site and hence it is called a transnational world heritage site that's it okay so 1 into 1 is 1 that is architectural work of lake arboiser that's it of union territories now comes special ones two of the 40 world heritage sites in india are special so we consider it as others that is two of them let us see what they are that means it does not belong to a particular state okay it it covers a region first this one like this this is western ghats as we know this is western ghats and then comes so this is the first one one of the special two so the second one is we call it mountain railways mountain railways so majorly we find three areas that we considered as mountain railways under heritage sites so one is over here and over here and over here here we find the nilgiri railway nilgiri railway 
and Darjeeling Railway in West Bengal, Darjeeling Railway, and coming to Himachal Pradesh, we find Shimla Railway. That is, uh, what was it actually? Yeah, Kalka Shimla Railway, Kalka to Shimla, Kalka to Shimla Railway. So Kalka to Shimla Railway, Darjeeling Railway, and Nilgiri Railway. All these three combined we say as mountain railways which is a special world heritage site in india so what are the two western guards and mountain railways so we have seen the uh, all the 40 world heritage sites in india as per the number of states and number of union territories now in the next video let us look at them as cultural and natural thank you